Hello, hello, hello. This is Private Talk Podcast with Alexis Texas, and we are back season two after dark, and we have the pleasure of having Kendra Sutherland on the couch. Hey, <laughs> see, we clap with you. you know, I, I like, it. you know, we give people their flowers when flowers are due. Thank you for coming and being on Private Talk before me. I'm Yo. excited to talk to you and get to know you a little bit more. I know I feel like I've known you for so long, but it's like you don't really get to intimately know somebody until you kind of have this intimate one-on-one -on -one conversation. So thank yeah. you again for taking the time. I know you're a busy lady. Thank um, you for having me. Yes. Yeah. So let Private Talk know a little bit more about you. Tell us, you know, I know that obviously you're an adult star. You do mm -hmm. several movies. You've done, mm -hmm. you've had such a great career. <laughs> um, tell us what you wanted to know for the Private Talk podcast. Um, my name is Kendra Sunderland, also known as Library Girl. Um, I smoke a lot of weed. <laughs> I just like I work and I hang out with my cats that's all I really do so you say the library girl thing I didn't really want to like bring it up because it's something that I'm sure you talk about in every interview every time kind of whatever you know <laughs> but it's like the start of where you came from and how it happened can you tell us a little bit more about that and where it's kind of pushed you to where you are now mm -hmm. yeah I um, started webcamming in college when I was 19 and I decided to do a webcam show in my college library Oregon State University go beavers <laughs> um and someone posted the video on Pornhub with my legal name. So, so they recorded what you were, like your session that you were doing yeah, without your knowledge. Yeah, like I guess it was like on the internet under my um, cam name. And then what people. What was your cam name? Baby Girl 420. Baby Girl 420. <laughs> okay, okay. I like it. You, I like that you stay up to, you know, the 420 thing. Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> like only the OG people like know back from that day. But uh, yeah, they posted on Pornhub with my legal name. So. I use my real name, and um, then it just blew up in the college town. It was in the news in Oregon, and a lot of people said that it was in the news and like newspaper in other countries, and they saw it all over the place. So, um, how did that make you feel? I mean, you did something that, like, you know, you were webcamming, and you know, you're probably doing because you're in college. You mm -hmm. know, you're like free spirited and all those things. Did you realize? That at any moment that someone could do that and like release it on a Pornhub plat kind of platform? Uh, no, I never really thought that would happen. I kind of like, kind of just had started webcamming. Like the library video was my second day of webcamming, so I didn't know anything. So you're like, damn it, why'd they pick this one <laughs> of all ones? Yeah, I was like, oh, uh, like I had this um, jacket on, my hair was in a messy bun on the side. Like I was really just going there like last minute, and so I didn't really plan it. But that one is. I feel like those sometimes course, always work out the best for us and when we like kind of plan things it's still good for us but mm -hmm. you're like when it's like the least amount of work you're like damn yeah for sure I don't know I guess everyone loved it just girl next door type college masturbating in the library type thing <laughs> I mean go figure that's you know that's kind of a hot thing you know mm -hmm. there's so many movies that you you know watch like that kind of emulating those things and it's actually now happening and yeah. when those things real life happen I feel like it's like wait is there other girls doing this too yeah so it's like it creates this whole other <laughs> fantasy Mm -hmm. So you took that and like, so you, you decided to make a career of it, which I kudos to you. I feel like it takes, you know, big um, accomplishment to really kind of step into your own and knowing, you know, your, your own self-worth and what yeah. you could do and the power of that halves. Because I feel like a lot of people are like, oh, you just, you got pushed into it. Oh, like you want to take control or whatever. And everyone has their own stories naturally. But I feel like with you, you've always seemed like you're, you've always been comfortable in your own skin mm -hmm. you're very you know vocal about your opinions and things like that and I feel like there should be more women like that because that's you know how we get further ahead in life is because yeah. just being honest yeah it takes a lot I mean I used to be really insecure about things and like webcamming I feel like kind of helped me get over that I've always been like an openly sexual person and like um, never really afraid to be open about it and so when I found webcamming it kind of helped me realize that like I could make a career out of this, but also to love myself and my body because like my nipples is something I've always been insecure about. And then I remember when my first nude got out, they called me pepperoni nipples. And I was like, my nipples are proportionate to the rest of my boobs. Like I'm sorry or whatever. And after that, I kind of just like got over it because everyone on webcam would be like, oh, I love your nipples. I love your boobs. I love this, everything. And I was like, wow, this is great. And I was making a lot of money for a broke college student. So I was like, fuck what everyone says. Like, I want to do this and travel and then like go places. I could take videos and pictures of myself in those places. And then it's work. You know, I was like that lifestyle just kind of appeals to me so much more than anything I could have got with 
college. You know? So you feel secure in your you know decision of what you did. Yeah, yeah, I'm really happy. I I definitely came to those terms before the library video got out because it was like. I want to say like two months after I did the video that it actually got put on Pornhub. So I had time to, you know, for my family to find out and for me to kind of get past everything. And then when the library thing got out, I was just like, OK, I'm ready to see where this takes me. So you said that, you know, you, you've always been open sexually. And you like you said, you used your your current um, legal name, Kendra mm -hmm. Sunderland. So how did your parents feel about that aspect? Because, you know, at first, you know, you didn't really know that that was going to be released as your, you know, it was baby girl 420. Yeah. So how did that, was that a bigger conversation other than you just being in what you chose to do? Or because you were so open already, did they kind of not necessarily thought it would become like your next thing, but mm -hmm. they were open to the idea like, like maybe this could have happened anyways? Yeah, I don't, I don't think my parents really cared that it was my actual name because um, when they found out I was webcamming, they kind of just cared more about me like sexualizing myself like that. And I was like, look, I'm just like, I'm happy doing this. Like it's safe um, and I make really good money and this is what I want to do with my life. And eventually they were kind of like, well, whatever makes you happy. And then I also said I wouldn't like get into actual porn videos, but then I changed my mind at some point and then my mom was kind of upset about that but they got past it I'm really lucky my parents and my whole family are very very supportive that's awesome I feel like you know as we evolve we're allowed to change our minds and our opinions mm -hmm. about certain things and I feel like our parents like because they made us who we are they feel like they kind of like yeah. naturally you know be like okay well I'm gonna love you anyways even though I didn't want you to do it but okay because like we yeah. similar story with my family it was very like I was very nervous. I didn't know how to like say it, but I knew that I had to because it was like mine was back then was like DVDs, so it was like it took a little bit longer. Um, but at the same time, too, I had shot a DVD and then I also worked for Bang Bros. So that next Monday that I shot that scene, it was already out, mm. and then the other scene hadn't been released yet. So people kind of differentiate about what my first scene was. Yeah. But with my family, I knew they didn't watch it, but I was like, oh, I've got to tell you something. <laughs> yeah. So, and their biggest thing was like, well, why? You know what I mean? Like, if do you, is it your choice? Or do you feel comfortable doing it? Whatever. Like, there was a lot of like, just as long as you choose to do it, it's not something that I saw you doing in, later in life. But yeah. if you're happy, whatever makes you happy. With my mom, it was more like, she was very concerned about that. For me, it was like, it's how I sexualize myself. It was like, it's like art. You know, it's how I express myself and how I portray myself and how I want to. Like, I have the control and what I release with myself and what I allow myself to do and be into as well. And so for her, it's just like work is work. You know, we're successful, you're successful. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's very important, I think, in a business like ours, you know, in any business, but to have the support of your parents because, you know, we already question certain things, you know, just evolving and going through time. It's like, you know, are we just young, dumb, and full of cum? Or is this something that it's going to be long term, you know? And for me, it's, you know, I never regret any of my choices. And I feel like... It's just about, again, evolving. Now I chose to do it as a brand and a business and make mm -hmm. something bigger into it because my thing was, if you know, I'm going to do it, go big or go home. Yeah. And Miss Texas didn't go home. Yeah. But we're just doing different lanes hey. of things. So <laughs> what are you have going on with that, all that being said? Um, I'm just always shooting for browsers. I'm contracted to them. So I just shoot for them all the time and all their amazing websites and um, production crews and stuff. And I do my own website, so. Do you prefer kind of like the contract thing? Because, you know, after your release, you know, Vixen came in and kind of swooped you up and kind of did a contract thing. So you've kind of always kind of been in one. Yeah, I've always um, been on contract. How, you know, talk to the viewers about that. Like, how is being a contract girl? Um, It's, I don't know. It's kind of weird to me because it's not something people really experience all the time. And it's all that I know. Like, as soon as I shot my first scenes, I was on contract, got off contract. I didn't shoot for any other companies got on contract again. So to me, it's just like normal for me, but yeah. I definitely like it because I like to build a relationship with the company mm -hmm. and um, Brazzers is like family to me. And I just love like repping them. I love being like a Brazzers girl and, you know, wearing their merch. Everybody knows when they see it, they're like, oh, fuck yeah, I love your fucking hat or your t-shirt or stuff like that. And, and I'm sure it's still like, you know, it kind of boosts it and keeps your, you know, your name still relevant within what's going on because they have so many big campaigns that are going on and they stay really kind of in the me like in the, in the media focus whatever so yeah. i think like that's a really good thing and that's kind of feel like with girls like you you know like you said like you that's all you've ever known like that's kind of like legacy type things mm -hmm. where it's like more power to you girls will get, look yeah. up to those things like that you know but it's also in those things where it's like you have a lot of not no control because you do still work for yourself but you also have you're representing just a brand and mm -hmm. it, sometimes it's not just you uni unilarity of yourself yeah. yeah i'm definitely i'm glad browsers you know they allow me to kind of 
do my own thing. Like if I wanted to dye my hair pink, I could, you know. Do you have any restrictions with them as being a contract girl at all? I mean, I can't shoot for other people. Well, I mean, besides that, but like anything personally wise, like, you know, now there's all these things with platforms from OnlyFans and Fan Centros and all these things. Do they kind of limit your, you know, ability of doing those things or is it just kind of a free for all? Anything I want to do. I mean, I have my own website where I make my own like production films and, you know, it's never a problem. And I love that about that. That's awesome. Because yeah. like some people before back in the day with, you know, contracts was like, you're very limited to even shoot for your own things, you know? And oh, that's, yeah. You know, it's so it's my Vixen contract was a lot more strict than the, <laughs> than the browser's contract. That's for sure. So would you say that you prefer your browser's contract over your Vixen one? Yeah. I mean, I appreciate Vixen, everything that they did for me and how that helped me build my name and stuff like that. Um, but I do feel like I've evolved a lot. I know what I'm OK with and what I'm not OK with. And um, I should be able to be myself. Like if I want to dye my hair pink, I should be able to dye my hair pink. I should be able to have my long nails, you know, things like that. Would you say that was more like because in a sense, you know, coming into the industry and not either having been in a contract or on sets, whatever, that you were just kind of maybe naive to what they thought you were going to do? Yeah, like my first scene, um, my hair is parted in the middle, which it is right now, but it's different. But I just feel like I kind of was like, more so trying to please and put out a good scene and listen to the director and what he thought would be the best. And then I've kind of realized now that I've been in it for, I've been shooting actual scenes for like five years now, I've kind of realized that I want to be myself in the scenes and I want my fans to see me like having fun and like doing what I want to do when I shoot and how I want to look and for sure. My long nails, like, you're not going to see me without my long nails. But I think that, you know, it all kind of make, goes together because that shows who what your personality is. And that's what our fans want is yeah. to see who the real you is. And if that in your moment in time for whatever two years you want to have pink hair, then so be it. I feel like sometimes it, it gets so, like, you know, nitpicking about things. And I understand as far as corporate wise why certain people do things. But that's also yeah. why when you become independent, I feel like for myself is why I only got into a contract until the latter part of my career um, with Adam and Eve and Elegant Angel. But at that time, it was very different than what contracts were when I first started in the yeah. industry that were very strict like you can only have blonde hair you can only have a French manicure you can have whatever I'm and for me I'm like a rebel with no cause yeah. so I'm like I don't even I, I don't know why I don't like this but I don't like it like I'm you know and, and even with Adam and Eve <laughs> before you couldn't smoke marijuana you got drug tested and I was like well I smoke oh, weed hell so nah. they're, they, for, <laughs> they, they luckily for myself are we are pro weed so mm-hmm. they, that wasn't an issue but I don't think a lot of people stood up and said hey no I'm, I, don't, I could be drug tested for everything else but not weed yeah so there was there's little things like that that people don't realize are like that really goes on I'm like yeah it's a business you know and people you know why I love having the podcast is like kind of getting to know the ins and out of the business and knowing a little bit more what we kind of really deal with and people you know to humanize us a little bit more that people think that we're just sex robots where sometimes we are you know what I mean and that's you know we're sexual (laughs) athletes what I like to say but it's also like you know there's definitely more behind just a scene or a contract or your websites and what you're allowed to do and not allowed to do while you're in you know certain contracts and things like that yeah I think people forget like we're human too like we have feelings okay Mm -hmm. and it's hard enough to do what we do like put ourselves out there and be branded forever as a porn star like I'm never going to get away from that or the library video so it's like it's hard enough and I hate when people online just like shit on us or like try and say things or like your parents probably don't respect you I'm like that's funny because my parents tell me they're proud of me all the time so it's like and that's why for me and I like, you know, get in the business and myself and like just what I am in my journey. And like, I'm very more like a, I feel like I'm an empath. So I feel certain things that I feel like when you're doing good, you should be told, you know, that's a really big accomplishment to t- accomplishment to be told like, hey, there's going to be haters there's going to be whatever. But in every choice that you choose to do, there's always going to be. So as long as yeah. you're sitting here and you're comfortable in your skin and your choices and your everything you've done for you, then fuck the haters right. you know at the end of the day fuck the haters there's always going to be someone who doesn't like what you want to do anyways so yeah we always do what we want to do here at private talk mm, love it. so <laughs> you say you have your website please plug any website that you have your only fans where can we find all the yummy things that you are doing oh, yeah i have so many it's um my main website is kendra sunderland vip.com that's where i put all my full length um videos and stuff and you could also buy it clip store style i have a merch store on there and then there's also a part where you can buy used items that i've worn or touched or stuff like that and And just wardrobe i like yeah i like it um (laughs) like things i've worn in shoots and stuff like that so i pretty much sell anything and onlyfans is onlyfans.com slash ks library girl get it girl you know get our flashlights 
Yes, flashlights are a fun thing. Private talk. If you don't have her flashlight, you should. If you don't have mine, you, yeah, you're you fucking need up both. Alive. You need both. <laughs> it's like we could be like a threesome. I know on a yes. Friday night, it could be just me and Kendra right in your hands and we don't talk when that's the best part for you because mm. I feel like I always have my selling poem is like I'm the best version of me I can ever be I don't have a headache I'm always ready to go and I'm just yeah. don't talk back you know Good. sometimes you just Perfect. need to you just need to like you know push your face in a pillow and just shh, you could just listen to this while you use them you know yes cool. so <laughs> talk about do you have you have your flashlight you have a merchandising thing is there any other things that you have that you're working on that you what you see yourself doing in the next like two to five years um, I started a magazine, um, it's called SMD, Sex, Money, Drugs, and I put out a first issue and I haven't really gone That's back big. to it, but it's kind of, I can't decide if I want to continue with it or not. I loved it because it was another creative outlet for me where I could be, I could put whatever the fuck I wanted. Like, I'm not going to put this stuff on OnlyFans or my website cause that's a different vibe, but this like. I was naked in an in and out drive through like I was naked in front of a church, like and all this stuff and talked about drugs and money and sex. And I really, really loved it. But I also feel like the company that I was with at the time doing it pressured me to put it out before I was ready okay. and really didn't care about it being everything I wanted it to be. They, I feel like they cared about making money off of it and all this stuff. And so since I've split with them, I haven't gone back to it. But I really want to do it. It's just a lot uh, to do a magazine on top of my OnlyFans, my videos, shooting for browsers, my personal life, keeping my shit together. Like a bitch is busy. Going on vacation. Like a come bitch on. is busy. It's a lot. But busy is a good thing. You know what I mean? And what I've mm. learned from myself, if you want to take anything from me, it's like you know, at certain times there's certain things that you evolve to do, and not that you, if you you know choose to do them and you continue cool but when we evolve whatever we want to do business stuff you got to take time to do those certain things even it's just a little piece and, and that's what's great about building a team that's really good behind you to see yeah. your vision and you know it's great that you know if you didn't see your vision then you know okay cool you're the one who's behind it it's your ideas your things yeah. so I just say stick with it and maybe not right now but you know keep that idea alive because I feel like it's something good because people do want to know what's inside your mind and what your thoughts are and what you you know what your opinions are even if they don't think we're human, there are the ones that they, yeah. you know, they really do. And that's why I feel like about humanizing ourselves as being a little bit more, more vulnerable. I and mean, that's something that I work on myself that, you know, we give ourselves sexually so much that it's like, oh, I don't want to give you everything. But, you know, sometimes it's almost kind of works out in our favor in the long run. Really yeah. like we, people, we can be more a little bit empathetic. Yeah. I, I hate people that take advantage of people in the industry because it's like, I work so hard. Like people don't think we work hard, but it is so exhausting. I was on set for nine hours the other day. Like had to get up at 6 a.m., drive all the way to freaking Palmdale. And like, it's really exhausting. So for someone to come along and see me work hard and know I've been taken advantage of before, which I told them, and then to think in their head like, oh, how can we make money off of her? Like, what can we do to get our part? you know, and make the most off of her that we can. Like, I fucking hate that so fucking much. For sure. I think disgusting. that I think that a lot of people, too, it's, what sucks is, and especially the misconception is, like, when we start doing the business stuff, mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, you're just a dumb bitch. You don't know anything. Um, no, just because I chose to, like, suck dick. Like, bitch, I was in college sucking dick, okay? I wasn't just doing this. Like, I, you know what I mean? Yes. But the things is, like, you, you know, you have a brain of people until you stand up for yourself and you choose, like, when you're, like, not taking the shit and be like, okay, you can't, you're not going to, you know, we may have done it once, but fool me twice kind mm -hmm. of thing. Um, it's like it's like you have to kind of just put that backbone. And that's when people are like, oh, you're a diva. No, I just speak my mind. You know what yeah. I mean? And that shouldn't be as the category as a diva. It's like, no, I'm a bad bitch and bad bitch. Sometimes you got to be like, no, this isn't for me. And I'm just going to go on with myself. Yeah, facts. Yeah. So what is one of the craziest interactions you've ever had with a fan? Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many. I don't know. I guess. Um, Do you typically have bad ones, or are they just crazy scenarios, or is it? Well, you say so many. What is? What does that it's mean? It's mostly good, but there are a lot of. Um, I hate to say weirdos out there, but they are. And um, I think the craziest one isn't weird at all. But um, someone came up to me at Sexpo in Australia, and. I signed his arm and then he's like, I'm going to go get this tattooed. And I was like, yeah, sure. He comes back like two hours later and he's got it all bloody with the, like the saran wrap. And I was like, okay, like that's hard. I like that. So that's fun. That one's probably the funnest, but I don't know. I've had feature dancing. I've had some weirdos. I'm like giving them lap dances and he's like, it's his bachelor party. 
And he's like, looks me in the eyes and he's like, I'll run away with you right now if you want. Oh, and I was like, nice. ah, ha, ha, ha. like no, Let's call like, your wife and tell you that. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, ha, ha. And he was like, no, I'm serious. Like, I'll leave her and go with you if you want. And I was like, mm, this is going to be a no for me. You're like, but, when uh, is this dot turned? He's like, don't I have a say in this? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> your poor wife. Okay, but. Yeah, I don't know. Once someone almost threw up on me. Oh, no. Why? Yeah. By a lap, with lap dancing or just in general, like, no. trying to get your autograph and they were nervous? He was, yeah, he was talking to me standing up, and he was just really drunk and stumbling, and then he kind of, like, threw up a little, like, ah. put on the ground, and I just, like, slowly stepped away. I was like, mm, no, 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 no. I'm done. I'm That's here. a no for me, Brent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. There's, you know. You have fun stories. I mean, not yeah. fun. Like after when you talk about them, but at the moment you're probably like, "What the fuck is going on with my life right now?" Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, interesting. What's one of your most fun moments that you've had with the fan, or most like kind of like, oh, like you kind of like felt some kind of like warm fuzzy feelings inside, and maybe for some a compliment mm, or I may have hooked up with a couple of my fans. Oh, so They're you fuck fans, I like you know. <laughs> Maybe. Like at your at the strip club, uh, your dancing yeah, gigs. Yeah, dancing gigs. Like sometimes there'd be hot guys that come in to see you, and I'm like, I'm here for the weekend. <laughs> like I got a hotel room. Do they Let's get go. scared? Does any of them have everyone in any ghosted you? And they're like, you're yep. not, you're not serious, or they're too drunk and can't get it up and fuck. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Was, uh, you're like all of the above, private. Talk. <laughs> I just say that if it if it goes well and I have a great time, it's a surprise and it's a pleasant surprise, but. A lot nice. of times, it's whatever. Is there a, is there a city that you like? That do you remember the most <laughs> because of this fan favorite moment? Um, I don't know. I <laughs> I if I had like an iPad where I could go through all the memories and look, I could, but I can't remember it. Not off top. No, I, I smoke a lot. I was gonna say weed, you smoke so. a lot, so I feel I feel your pain. Like I'm like, hey, you want me to remember what I yeah. did yesterday? It's kind of hard. They all blend together at a certain yeah. point. Memory loss. But I don't like, know you should where start like from. deciding like you know if it's a certain family. Like Chicago was great. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like start labeling them as like where it is, because then it's like maybe you can like do things based on going where you're gonna go back. Yeah, I mean, I'm probably won't. Do you ever re again? Do you ever repeat offend? Um, sometimes. I mean, it's very rare. I from feature dancing, I would be in other cities and states, so I don't see those people very often. Yeah, that's the glory about it, though, because yeah. it's like it's like a one stop shop. You're like, all right, really, two nights only. They're like, you know, that the song that you hear, like it's like you're only in town for the night. You really think that's a myth, but no, it's true, and it's kind of nice. great. Although, like, I never really di like dipped into the like the like anything because I was just always too scared. The first part, I was married and I was faithful, other than fucking up for porn. Yeah. And then I after that, I was just like so used to not doing it but i definitely have like f like fantasized and fucked into a whole orgy of my fans fucking me on stage because nice. i just think that's hot but yeah feature dancing was fun i love i loved being sexual in front of my fans and seeing their faces and stuff but so you say it's, it's no so more fucking exhausting you say it's no more is no. it just because it's exhausting or yes. because of covid or because of you have so much other shit going on uh i think just exhausting i think i had a lot less going on back in the day i mean feature dancing is one of the first things i did when i was 19 first library girl so i'm tired of it i've been doing it for years like i think my knees are gonna need knee You're surgery like a bitch is tired yeah it's exhausting no, people really you don't know? realize how much work it really is like it's it's a workout and yeah, like my you're knees doing were always you know, fucked. four to five shows a weekend. Mm -hmm. There are 20 minute shows. Then mm -hmm. you do a meet and greet. Then you're doing all these things on top of things. And it's not that we don't love to meet all of you guys, yeah. but it's 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 taxing because then you come home and then you don't maybe you have a. I used to recover at least one day on the Monday yep. and then you'd go mm -hmm. back to shooting mm -hmm. and then you do all this. And then by th Wednesday, I'm unpacking my stuff because I didn't unpack. And now I'm packing it all back because I'm leaving on Thursday again, yeah. all because we love you so much. But yeah. I myself did it for 10, you know, 10 years. And sure. I, uh, I decided before COVID even happened, I was, you know, I was segue adding out, out of doing it. So it was going to be my last year, last year anyways. Yeah, um, same. But because, because, like, you know, I wanted to do with the podcast and I want to tour with that and take that kind of out there and more that kind of lane. Um, but then, you know, COVID happened and then it was like, if this isn't a bigger sign to why to tell me to just pause and just kind of redirect what I'm doing, then mm -hmm. I don't know what else is. Because the biggest thing was like, I knew I needed to do that for the next career, like next step in my career. But it's also getting off that hamster wheel is really hard because yeah. it's good money. I like socializing with my fans. Like it's really great meeting them and seeing like, you know, it makes you feel like it's worth it, mm -hmm. you know, because it's excitement and like, you know, the money and just like the lights, everything and whatever about why I even started. 
it's still there. So it's very hard to be like, oh, I'm yeah. just getting deuces, you know? So, yeah. but in the I same feel tense, bad for the fans, too. it's like we give ourselves other ways, you know? Yeah. Like, I'm sure you do live shows on your OnlyFans and, you know, with uh, Cam, uh, Cam Soda mm-hmm. and all those stuff like that. So it's like we have to, like, just learn how to separate ourselves a little bit more here and there. And that. It's so rough. I do. I'm going to miss the fans, but I can't do it. No are more. you going to do any expos anymore or are you just mm-hmm. not dancing? Well, that you? one I kind of don't feel like because of COVID. Okay. I'm just like, I'm not. Personal choices. Yeah. Yeah. It just seems like a lot. And you're meeting them, you're hugging them, you're taking pictures with them. A lot of times they breathe on you and you know, you could tell they're breathing on you. So you mean they're hot and sweaty while they yeah. touch you, Kendra? Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we all know how it is. <laughs> you got those ones at the expos that are, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us about your dating life. Are you single? Are you dating? What's going on with this Miss Kendra? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm single, I'd say. I want the truth! <laughs> <laughs> We've got buttons here, don't I you I love play? it. I love it. <laughs> you said that, like, you know, I, I'm an empath myself, so I feel like you're like, you were like, almost like you were like, yeah, I'm single. Well, I don't really fully believe that, though. Are you I in mean, a situationship? Are you really single? Are you just like, were you shy saying single because you don't want to admit that you're single? Talk to me, girl. Above. Talk to me, girl. <laughs> I, yeah, I hate being single. I wouldn't say that I'm dating anyone in particular. I mean, I, I like when I'm dating, I like to like choose someone and get comfortable with them because then I like going to their place. I feel comfortable enough to like, walk around with no pants on in your place or just walk through the door. I like that instead of dating a whole bunch of different people and having to get past that uncomfortable phase over and over again. There's no roster for Miss Kendra Sunderland. I mean, there is, there is, you know, I got a couple. (laughs) Is it like one to three or one through five? Are we doing a whole basketball? Like what's the roster list? You know, I'm think I'm starting to think that maybe I should have five boyfriends because then I'll I'll probably get the amount of attention that I require. Oh, so you require a lot of attention. I love, I just, I love affection and I love intimacy and I love, love you're and a I love have a bummer. lot of love to give okay when's the last time you've had a boyfriend mm, um I would say I guess a couple months ago it just didn't work out but I wouldn't I don't know if it was really like a solid relationship okay I feel like I kind of try and force things just to have something but because you're a love bomber Yep. I don't know why. I can't help it. It, It's how I thrive is just the feeling of love and feeling interested in someone and then being interested in you. Like I just thrive off that feeling. I feel like I I feel like a lot of women and my, you know, girlfriends, you you have wine night, you talk about all kinds Mm -hmm. of things, whatever. I feel like a lot of women are in the same situation and I don't think it's a bad thing. I feel like sometimes because maybe things don't work out, we feel like, oh, was I too much? But it's like you're too (laughs) much will be enough for the next person. It's just not that person because I myself force myself into situations when I'm like you know in the past where it was like I'm in this relationship or two no it really was kind of like not a real relation and maybe in my head it was and I was loyal in my head but why you know what I mean like it's so when you find things out you're like oh yeah no like why and like you're a young hot chick who's like you should be doing all those things but I get it so it's like after especially just what we do sometimes I just want to hug yeah I just want to hug like I you know you want to feel like you know the like unconditionalness from somebody because of the choices we made, even though we know I'm, I'm okay with them. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's cool to, you know, and, and I'm perfectly fine myself. I'm single and um, I'm, I feel like I'm finally ready at this point in my life where I'm actually ready for a partner and looking for those things, but I'm also not ready to settle either. Yeah. So it's like, as much as I'm probably a love bomber myself, I look like I'm very, like I say, like I'm a turtle. I have a really hard outside shell. But yeah. once you get inside, I'm very mushy and very lovey-dovey. And mm-hmm. like, I could probably be too much to the wrong person too. But I do yeah. with the right intentions. But then they're like, but why aren't you a savage? I'm like, I am still a savage, <laughs> but I have a heart <laughs> and I love hearts. Gangster. And I'm like, you know, I like the heart <laughs> emojis and you do all those things. Yeah. Emotional gangster. I like very that. Lovey. I, there's another quote. It's like, if I'm too much, then go find less. Yeah, and I love that because if is, I'm too much, then go fucking find less. Like, but, exactly. but you won't find but someone that cares like I care. But you're a big personality, like though. But you're a big personality, mm-hmm. and that's not a bad thing. But you should you have to find somebody who not surfacely is okay with that, with you yeah. being in a room, but long term. Because people, especially, I'm sure the same thing. It's like, who do you want to date, Kendra or? Kendra, yeah. <laughs> Kendra or Bendra or Spendra. You know what I mean? There's so a it's few like, personalities. So, it's, it's different, and you know, it's cool to evolve and to change, whatever. But 
you come with the whole package. Yes. All those Bendras, Bendras, all those Worth girls it. are all trickled into one. <laughs> all trickled in. So I feel like the right man will come along when it's time. But I feel like you have a lot of life to live. You're very, yeah. you know, I love the way that you're so like open minded and free minded. And like, you're just very kind of like, kind of to me from the like outside looking in, it's just like, you're willing to try everything once. You know what I mean? Because you're just like, you kind of live in the moment. And I, I, I love that, especially being how old you are and like how young you are and how just being like the opportunities. It's cool to be in that and not be like just a lump in a log and not like appreciate it. But you could yeah. generally tell that you love life and like you're, you know, you're in it. And I think that that's a really, you know, important thing to be in this industry, especially. And it's what kind of makes you thrive to the next thing. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's definitely very hard too to like. I mean, it's hard for anyone this this past, like, two years to be happy and, you know, find happiness in this fucking crazy-ass pandemic world. But you're also, you know, changing, and you're changing in a world that's kind of crazy on the outside, too. But, you know, you're in a business that's you're looked upon a little bit more than everybody else. So having that on top of it, you know, mental health issues and things like that come, and we all... What the hell? <laughs> well, all right, whatever that was. God's talking to us somewhere. <laughs> it's, not like thunder. It's, like, it's like, you know, all those things come into like key, key components of like going to like, oh, like I may feel crazy today and I want to love somebody. And then the, tomorrow you're collecting them and be like, why am I even talking to this person? Mm -hmm. Like, what am I doing to myself? X. So I've learned to put the phone down and just do a face wash, you know, Start, go to the spa. Joint. Definitely joints are a must in all joints. We should actually spark. I like these. speaking I, of I'm joints, like, I keep looking at them like. Here, <laughs> I did this one for you, not because of COVID, I'm COVID free, but because, you know, the, the passing of it back and forth is just yeah, a lot. It's cool. I love personal joints. Very thoughtful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've been smoking uh, Jeter's. It's this company that makes uh, joints and joints dipped in oil and keef, and they have all these amazing flavors. Like, they just came out with peach rings. Mm, I'm a peach so girl. I, I mean, Me I know too. I'm wearing orange right now, but peach anything is, like, my Peachy favorite. Color. Mine, too. Is, like, any, like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a sucker for peach anything. When I saw that that was the flavor, I was, like, Fuck me up. As soon as I got home from Oregon, I literally ordered them. I was like, I can't even wait for you guys to send me some. Like, I'm going to buy them right now. I love that. They're delicious. I have to try it. I'm always down to try new things, especially if it's, you know, peach, peaches all day, peaches all day. All right. I feel like it's because we're sparking the joint. I feel like we should get to truth with Texas. We got to know you a little bit more, your thoughts and all those things. And I appreciate you for talking to us a little bit more. Again, private talk get to know you a little bit more intimately um so we are playing a game truth with texas it's four aces each ace suit is a different type of question and we're gonna let our fans know a little bit more about us Ooh all right oh okay hearts Oh, see, look, that was your gravitational pull. That's the romantic question. Your love bomber. <laughs> Private talk, if we know anything about her, we know she's a love bomber. So you better be love bombing her OnlyFans, her website, go love. and subscribe, buy the clips, do all those things and support this sexy lady. She's an entrepreneur and I love it. <laughs> so let's see. Romantic. Romantic. I would ask you, I usually start it with, would you consider yourself romantic? But I already know that answer. Yep. <laughs> Hopeless romantic. Okay, let's do this one. What's the most romantic thing you've done for a partner? Because I feel like you do things that are romantic for partners. Um, hmm. It's hard to say romantic. I mean, I've definitely, I would say, supported them and bought them things. But okay, I that's know not that romantic. It's not. Something that you've gone out of your way. <laughs> My toxic ass relationships. I'm like, well, I bought them things. We're going to learn that we're not buying men things only if we want to not support their lifestyle. We'll support them with love. We're going to love bomb mm. them that way. You know? <laughs> we can help you out here. Here at Private Talk, we like to give a helping hand. We like to like wait and look into your inner deep thoughts. What is the most romantic thing you've ever done for a partner? Oh, geez. I honestly, I can't really think of anything. Like, okay, what's the most romantic thing someone's done for you? Again, nothing. All right, motherfuckers. <laughs> Listen to Miss Texas. If you are going to slide into her DMs, if you're just, I know you're probably watching. We probably have similar fans. I'm pretty sure about it. You know, I haven't been shot scenes in a while. But, you know, I'm still relevant. I like to say I'm in these streets, okay, with the porno streets. So you better be coming correctly. She needs a man that's out there that's going to, you know, be 
physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and financially stable enough to support her and her lifestyle. So therefore, that comes with romantic gestures, things that she likes. She's a romantic girl. So we're going to manifest these things for you here at Private Talk because I feel like you need a man who's a man, who's yeah. like someone who can stand in a room with an alpha female and also allow you to be his sub. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, he needs to know when to check you when time needs to be checked because sometimes we all need a little, you know, reeling back in. Facts. I'm an alpha female. I've done it myself. You know <laughs> what I mean? But we're all still great women and you have a lot to offer. So we're manifesting this here for you right now. I hope so. I was going to say, I I mean, romantic things I've done for like scenes and stuff when I get flowers and champagne That's and not stuff, the it's same. for scenes. So I'm like, eh. I don't know, maybe like flowers, stuff on Valentine's Day, but yeah, I've, I've dated some pretty shitty men, I guess. Okay, we're going to do better. Yeah. 2022. Oh, I actually, I know. Oh, we're coming the back. The most romantic thing a guy has ever done for me was my ex-boyfriend, this last one. He would roll me a blunt and then go down on me while I was smoking the blunt until Ooh. I came, until I was high. Did you ever ash on his head? No. Man, I've done it before. It's kind of <laughs> hot. Not like, you know, to be a dick, <laughs> but it was hot. on purpose. <laughs> well, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> but it was sexy. You know? In my mind, it was sexy. I'm dead. No, I, I feel like I was always cautious to the to the blunt you are know? you more into giving or receiving um i don't know i think i like both equally i want a mixture of both like i really want, want somebody both. that gives and also i could give back to because i feel like if it's not 50 okay. 50 then one of That's us is going to be like yo what the fuck you never go down on me <laughs> like, but if it was like a certain situation are you the one going down on them or are they going down to you like just to like I wouldn't say one night stand because you're not really into one night stands. But like in your situation ship, you said you were comfortable with people. If yeah. it was like a like a hookup thing and y'all are like going on a Friday, whatever. Are you both going down on each other before you fuck or is one going before the other? I think I mostly go first. So you're initiating only. the dick <laughs> sucking. Yeah, but because I just love it so much. So a lot Makes of times I'm into it and I want to do it. But then once you do it so many times, every single time, then it's like I'm thinking in my head, like, damn, I could go for a blunt and some, you know, going down on me, you know, do every you once in a while. you switch up the blowjob techniques or it's always the same? Uh, it's kind of always the same. I just do whatever I feel like. I don't really have, like, a, a technique or, like, a step-by-step, -step, but I just do Each whatever dick is I feel different. like, it's gotta spit go a bit all different. over it. I like it. Yeah, if sloppy. it ain't sloppy, it's not toppy. E, I like it. <laughs> e, you heard her. You heard Kendra. Do you have sex on the first date? Yeah. Do you ever, <laughs> did you ever have a crush on a teacher? Um. Yeah, I think so. But there was a teacher that fell in love with me and it wasn't mutual, but he was very What grade was this? Oh, uh, well, he was in my high school teacher, but to be fair, he didn't do anything until after I got out of high school. So after he saw the library video, he was like, I've always been lusting after you, uh, and I've really been jerking <laughs> it to you for a really long time. I hope this doesn't offend you. It was before that, actually, before I became library girl, so I do wonder if he watches my videos. I feel like Definitely maybe he would cry while he watches it, because mm. he wrote me this poem one time saying Whoa. that I was the perfect woman or whatever, mm. and then I was just like... <laughs> He wrote me this letter one time. He's like, I've always, I've always been in love with you. And ended the letter with, if you shall ever need anything, there's little I wouldn't do for you. If you shall never. <laughs> <laughs> if you shall ever need anything, there's little I wouldn't do for you. Uh, he's definitely watching your porn. Yeah. And crying. Mm -hmm. He's like, I knew you were the one. <laughs> <laughs> and just like, that's maybe what made it gets him off. And you probably in your mind, sometimes he comes across you. Sometimes you're like, I'm doing it for you because I know I'm you're watching, dead. asshole. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, do you like sexting yes i do i hate guys that are like i don't have any dick pics or they're like weird about sexting. so you like dick pic dick pics yeah i mean i want to see what I'm but are you get. only wanting dick pics from like your significant like hookup at the time or do you or do you care like when fans send you dick pics are you rating them are you liking them are you like what the fuck did i just open i rate them on my only fans onlyfans.com slash ks library girl i like that i do too <laughs> um but yeah that to be I, honestly is one of my favorite things to do because i'm a i'm a like an observer i'm a people like watcher so i like to see what you have like mm -hmm. Sometimes like, they're nice. Not like I want to use all of them sometimes, <laughs> but I like to know what's out there in the world. You know, yeah. there's a lot of people in the world and everyone's dick and vaginas look completely different. Not one yeah. is like identical. 
Yeah, I, I think I just love to make people come. So if, whether it's over the phone or it's in person, I enjoy it. Have you ever had sex with twins or brothers? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I want the truth! Which one? Twins. I said it first. Uh, if they're twins, aren't they brothers? True. Oh, well, but I But like identical or like, you know, they could be uh, grades that are different. I, I mean, have grades, fucked ages that are different. Identical twins, yes. I have a thing... I, I see the twinkle I in your see, in erotic eye over here <laughs> as you glance at me. If I see identical hot male twins, I will do anything I can to get them to tag team me. How many have you took down? One so far. <laughs> are you have your eye on some other ones? Because twins identical are hard to kind of come yeah, by. Yeah. Anytime I see them, I'm like, <laughs> I, it like, you know, it gets to me. My, are you one getting of my, hot right now? Do you want a fan? I have one. I hear if you need yeah. it. <laughs> we Just can fan thinking you. about it. You know, you would think their dick is the same size, though. Are they? I wonder this. No? Sometimes they're <laughs> different. Sometimes one hits better than the other. And if you pick the wrong twin, oh no! Because you always have to start with one. You can't unless I was at a party <laughs> or something and I saw both. Then I would go up to both and be like, "Yo, what's up?" But most of the time, you have to like message one and get in there first, and then be so, like, oh, "That'd be cool," you know. <laughs> so you warm up one brother, and then like you get do you DM the other one too eventually, or you let no. that brother like t like dictate the situation. I think specifically the time before I hit up one and. Then I hooked up with him, and then I brought up that, like, you know, I've always wanted to be tag team by twins. Did they say that they'd done this before? Because I always I wonder, know. do, like, twin brothers fuck have. girls? I think they have. Like, if they're I, hot, they're going to do it. I wonder. I'm not the only girl out there that wants to fuck identical twins, trust me. They're, they're out there, but... Yeah, the other one was listening. I was like, mm, sounds fun. So then they just like, it just happened. Yeah, it just happened. I mean, I feel like, you know, I could do better. So you, you're, on a, in my you're, on a twin, you're in a twin conquest. Yeah, anytime I see twins, I'm like. Were they here in LA? Yes. Nice. Was it recently? <clears throat> no, it was a couple years ago, but. Would you revisit the same twins? No, I revisited the same one twin a couple months ago, but not not those ones i actually my neighbor is a twin but a um he has a girlfriend mm. and at first i thought it was the twins that moved in next to me because i only saw him and the twin in my building and i was like oh shit and then i realized that the other one has a girlfriend so i was like eh, no oh, no go i'm not gonna back off but if you guys ever do break up you know i'm here you heard it here first <laughs> a private talk <laughs> kendra's neighbor here. the twin with the with the girlfriend <laughs> if you ever break up she's available <laughs> <laughs> just saying oh i love it what's a romantic tradition that you dislike since you're such a romantic what do you think that is just like overplayed um romantic tradition like a, you know how like people do certain things like a, like a uh, valentine's day or like the things like that where it's like so such a like cliche type of holiday i think like dinner at a movie I feel like that's super cliche. Yeah. But, like, you got to step it up. Like, we're, we want picnics on the beach. Yeah. Like, we want you to set up something fancy where when we arrive, like, you know you took time and effort you into You heard that. our private talk. Let them <laughs> know, Kendra. Like, I want to walk into my house and see flower petals and, and candles everywhere. Like, if you're not doing that, then you don't deserve me. You heard it. <laughs> But I'll probably still fuck you anyways, honestly. <laughs> hey, what is a deal breaker for you in a relationship? Um, I think I realized I don't want a boyfriend that likes big black dicks as much as I do. Mm. <laughs> it just uh, didn't work out in the past. So I, th I think that is. Or if you want me to peg you, to me, that's a little. It's not it for me. Uh, uh. <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't expecting that, but I'm too dead. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, I've realized that. If you could take bigger in your ass than his. Yeah, I, I don't no think I me. could, to be honest. <laughs> and I'm starting to think back. I don't think I could have. Was this the one from two years ago, two months ago? Was this, when, when was this? In your A couple life? years ago. I see. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I'm scared. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, different strokes for different folks, you know? Yeah, I mean, not knocking it, but that's no. just not what I want. Exactly. You know? But that's the thing is like, but I, I agree with that. For me, it's like, you know, I had this recently had a conversation with a girlfriend that was like talking about how somebody like, 
her male partner took her to the sex store to get a toy, but it was for him, for her, it was for him, for her to fuck him in the ass. Ooh. But that was how he like told her about it. And I was like, uh, I don't know how I feel about yeah. that. Because my thing is, if you had this conversation before, but for me personally, like I just don't want to put a toy back there. I'll play with yeah. it. I'll lick it. I'll put my finger. I'll do, you know, I'll do all those things. Like that's cute. Those things. But it was a certain thing for my level that I don't think that I, for me, like if I'm bending you over, I'm not going to respect you as much. It's just not I, that. The thought That's, of that. If you're face down, <laughs> ass up as a man, I'm not going to look at you the same. I'm only going to see your hairy butthole yeah. for the rest now of my I, life. Now, if I didn't have feelings for you, I wouldn't care. <laughs> now, I still have never done that in, in any of movies yeah. or anything like that. Because for me, again, I don't want to demasculate a man in my thought process to do like in that level. Yeah. Because to me, then like, I don't want to like see a man's ass up in the air the whole time and, then, and just not get out of that picture from me like yeah. personally but if you're like so. laying down i'm blowing you and i'm going down to your balls and you want to just kind of like put your knees up so i can go all the way down back up if it's clean you know have you ever had cool. a man sit on your face <laughs> <laughs> probably like froggy style oh god i my <laughs> my ex probably did the the, the one i was just talking about I'm sure at some point he did, probably. <laughs> but like, did you know he was gonna sit on your face before, or you just like were like like bamboozled no, into the situation because he just turned around and he like frog squatted on your Not face? Not like that. More so like facing me, like I was blowing him, and then he, you know he, like, sometimes I'll go and put your balls, mm -hmm. and then he just went up further and put his ass in my mouth, and then you just had to put your tongue there. Yep. Sometimes <laughs> you just have to put your tongue there. So sometimes you just have to. I like the honesty. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just gotta lick it. Sometimes lick it before you stick they it. They like it, but you didn't want to stick it. Uh, no, actually, <laughs> I, he wanted me to peg him, and I was going to, and then my head started ringing, and I started getting really lightheaded, feeling like I was gonna black out, and I was like, I had to lay down. I think that was my body's way of telling me, like, don't do don't it, don't do this, don't do it. Is that don't what go down is, this road? Is, is that what like turned your relationship, or was there other problems after oh, that? God, there's so many problems. <laughs> From the beginning, I should have known. <laughs> no, the red flags, you just didn't. Yeah, when he moves in with you after like two weeks, that's a, a big red flag. Don't ever do that, ever, <laughs> ever. And you were paying for him. Yeah. Well, you know what? We live in our learn our lessons. Yes, we, never again. Again, the young, dumb, and full of cum thing, it's, really, it's a real thing. It's what? really a real thing. I know I've done my share of dumb things with men. <laughs> And I've learned from them. And you just learn that, you know what? You can't look back. You just enjoyed that moment. And you did it because you wanted to at that moment. Now you just learn. And you're like, you know what? The next one, not ever a motherfucking chance. Facts. Okay? So, next card. <laughs> Ace of spades. That's our favorite here at Ooh. Private Talk. It's the naughty question. And we know you're naughty because you are a fucking <laughs> library, library girl. girl. <laughs> Miss, I'm going to call you baby 420. What is it? Was baby it girl 420, baby girl 420. three Ys. <laughs> three know. Ys. I like Very it. specific. Baby girl 420. Baby girl 420. Baby girl 420. Baby girl. <laughs> All right. Naughty. Have you ever made a woman squirt? Yes, but it's, I was very scared. Why were you scared? Because you didn't know didn't if it know was what the piss fuck I was or doing. you were just like jingling, jingling down there and not knowing what was going to come out. I was like fingering her. I didn't have nails on at the time, but was I, this in before porn or in before, porn? Okay, yeah. So I was really nervous because on camera and I was, um, it was Riley Reed and I was like so freaking nervous. I was like, I don't. He's like asking her if she could do it. I was like, I don't know if I could do it. To I be don't know honest, the moves. I don't know, and I was like so afraid of hurting her. But, I mean, it worked. I just, I'm sure I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I feel like I felt accomplished the first time I made a girl squirt. Mm -hmm. It was like, but my term time, too, is like afterwards, they expect you to do it. I'm like, man, my hand's really tired. It's I'm really like, rough for me. Lot. I don't <laughs> personally like it because it's too rough for me. Yeah, and that, I feel like everybody's technique is different, but I, I agree. Yeah. Sometimes where it's like, it's like, that's just hurting, especially when you're doing the outside and like the inside feels okay, but you're like, your technique yeah. just needs work. Yeah. My 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 squirting fingers were on point. Don't you worry, private talk. <laughs> Don't you worry. It's Have you ever? Well, that's you know I already know that one. <laughs> uh, biggest turn off. Ooh, there's a lot of them. Tell us. Um, 
I don't know. I guess I hate when guys have huge egos. Okay. Or stuff like that. Or if we just don't vibe. Like if it's quiet or you're too quiet. If he smoked cigarettes, you wouldn't care. Oh, uh, hell like, no. Nah, no okay. cigarettes. I'm saying there's a lot. So, yeah. okay, I'll just list them. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. If you want to be with Kendra Sunderland, please do not <laughs> sign up if you have any of these problems listed above. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, you uh, you smoke cigarettes. No. You don't have any money. Not don't today. have a car. Nuh-uh. You don't have your own place. You heard her. You have, like... Your place is gross and you have like She's hairs not coming over. everywhere. If you have a dirty shower. Not happening. Um, your dick's not being sucked. If you don't clip your nails. Not today. Keep keep <laughs> your everything upkeeped. I don't know. If you can't get hard, it's a huge turn off. And does that, does that happen a lot to you? Because if like, yeah. what do you do? Is it like awkward and you're just like, all right, I'm just going home? Or are you just like, yep. do you laugh? Do you like, what's wrong I with you? I laugh internally. <laughs> <laughs> But do they give you an excuse? And what excuses are uh, there? Always like, this never happens to me. I don't, I don't know what the problem is. I'm really tired. I haven't eaten anything today. I already came today because I didn't want to, like, come too fast with you. Um, it's too hot in here. Guys ain't shit. I swear to God. I need God, a glass of water. <laughs> I need a glass of water. <laughs> All of the above. Like, just, I'm always like, it's fine. It happens. Goodbye. <laughs> it's cool. No, I hate that for you. That's mm-hmm. horrible. But I mean, guys are liars. I feel like, again, it's the idea of being like, oh, yeah, I'm cool with everything. And then like they either get too overly excited and then they just can't perform. Yeah, or they nervous. were sh- or they were just shitty lovers in the beginning and they wouldn't. It was a gamble in the first place. Like, yeah. you don't know, like guys don't really. Yeah. Also, don't go down there if you don't know what you're doing. Have you ever told somebody to stop? <laughs> I think I didn't say stop. I kind of just was like, eh, okay, come here. <laughs> like, please stop. You don't know what you're doing. Thanks. Yeah, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. Have you ever had pity sex? Yeah. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> All the time. All Have the you time. ever had revenge sex? Yup. I feel like my ex's best friend. What? Oops, why? Did I say that out loud? Never. I mean, we're just here at Private Talk, but we love private information. Was this like... Uh, because you knew it would get back to him or you just knew it to like it like why was your reasoning for? personal satisfaction so do you want him to know do uh, you think your ex current ex knows now or your ex I currently think, knows I don't know because um, he still hangs out with this person but people are so fake especially those people because one like as his best friend I'm his best friend's ex-girlfriend and you know we broke up and you're gonna fuck me and try to so that's disrespectful and then like for him for me to do it to him is disrespectful and then he also went and immediately dated this girl that was my friend and that I was like felt disrespected over that so for my own satisfaction I was like I'm gonna fuck your friend so you were just on a friend fucking frenzy because your feelings yeah. got hurt yeah but I got over it I only did it maybe once or twice so are you still friends with this girl hell no I fucking hate that bitch so was I'll this hate like her and him until I die? I will never. Did they ever try to like it. reach out and like kind of apologize to you, or no. you didn't feel like you needed that kind of thing, or you were just over it no, in general? No, I think that they could have told me when they thought that they would be something. They out of respect for me, they could have told me what was up. But for me finding out from other people and seeing online was very hurtful to me, especially because when so is I... Is that how you found out was online? Mm-hmm. And through other people. And it was very hurtful because I did so much for this person. And um, also when we broke up, I went to this girl's house and I cried to her about the relationship. And I told her everything about the relationship, like things I wouldn't want his next girlfriend to know. And then yeah. a couple weeks so later, they're trade. I mean, fair enough. Like you, yeah. you know... I feel like it's it's hard whenever like we're in those vulnerable states to really share and confide in somebody, and then it's kind of almost like you kind of took that and ran with it and made yeah. your own bed with it. But yeah. everything happens for a reason. That's unfortunate. I'm sorry that that happened to you. But you know what? I mean, I'm that much better mean, off. I've seen him say. recently, and I must just say I'm am much better off. I mean, things <laughs> happen for a reason, girlfriend. You know, you're Ooh. meant for something more. You're yes. something for better, bigger things, like that romantic thing. Better, that we're, bigger, blacker we're things. We're manifesting <laughs> for you that romantic person who's going to give you all those things that Miss Kendra needs. Thank you. I see it for you. Put I see it. it. There. Lube or spit? Spit. Women or men? Mm, I'd say 
women, but I like dicks so much, I would say men. Have you ever worn a wireless sex toy out to dinner? Yep. How did that go? How did that scene play out for you? Tell us here at Private Talk. It was fun at the Cheesecake Factory, you know. <laughs> Shout out to the Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> Shout out, Cheesecake. Uh, was it, or did the orgasm happen at the table or did an orgasm even yeah. Uh, happen? Yeah, I did. It was very prolonged because it's, for me, it kind of like wasn't really enough. And I had to kind of like move around. I felt like it was kind of obvious what was going on. Was it like a Harry Met Sally thing when they're like, you know, the old school movie when she's like orgasming? It's like a fake orgasm in the in the deli, and she's just like, ah, 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 ah. Did in, that happen internally at the it, cheesecake it was like factory? That, but I didn't. I was quiet. How was your orgasm? Can you tell us here in private talk? It was pretty good. Can you hear? It? Can we hear it? Uh, it was quiet. <laughs> How's your quiet orgasm voice? <laughs> I didn't really say anything. Just, I was more like, <laughs> <laughs> and then I laughed. So if someone I could have thought you were eating cheesecake and you're like, mm. yeah, you know, mm. like, mm, it's just so good. I think I really laughed the most because I do giggle a lot when I come and that was something that was normal to do at a dinner table. So I, w I was laughing a lot. Giggling, Giggling. coming. Yeah. Giggle comes. <laughs> All right, next question. Next card, actually, not next question. E. This one. It's rolling upside down. Clubs. It's the Ace of Clubs, which is a kinky question. Ooh. Would you consider yourself a kinky person? Um, moderately. Are you into bondage, yes or no? Yeah, but, not, you know, like, again, not anything extreme. I've also never really, like, experienced it. How, so you haven't worked for kink or any mm -mm. of those things? No, because I've always been on contract. I haven't worked for other people. Oh, true story. So would no. you some that is something that you would aspire to do in your own site or something like that a little bit more? Maybe not like kink style, but like bondagey. Or do you do that stuff on your site? Mm -hmm. I definitely would try it out for sure. I think I would want to have someone that knows what they're doing, though. It's important. And be like a real dom. And I'd, I'd just probably be like, go easy on me. I mean, there's you levels, know? you know. And like, what's great about you doing your, you having your site, your OnlyFans is like, you you're your own producer and director of your own film. So it's like you could do it as moderately or whatever. And you're, you know, paying that talent or whatever yeah. you want to do and be like, hey, look, I'm trying this for the first time, whatever. I'm sure your fans would love it. And you get to do it on your own comfort level. Yeah, for sure. I think I definitely would want to do that. And I want lots of aftercare sprinkled in there during, during care as well. I just want constant nice. care. <laughs> the love bombs? Yeah. The love <laughs> Are we love bombing again with bondage? Like if I could get aftercare 24 seven, that would be great, thanks. I'll rub your booty <laughs> you. on your boobies. I'll Everything. rub your booty, I mean, yours is nicer. E I'm gonna start somewhere. I naturally just go to booties because I say booty because of my own, but you know, mm -hmm. I'll let you rub the booty. Okay. <laughs> Role play, yes or no? Yes. Your school girl, big surprise. Ooh, <laughs> you, do you do this in your personal life? Yeah, I love it. Do they love it as well? Yeah, I have so many school girl outfits. I like that. Do they, do they request ones. it? They're like, hey, the school girl. Tonight, yeah. the school girl. Yeah, that one. Or I, I like to just surprise people. Like I like to just like get dressed up and then pop out and be like, boom, porn star mode on them. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Have you ever pegged a man? No, I passed out. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite sex toy? Uh, Hitachi. Mm, my fave. Mm -hmm. I named mine mm, Bob. Special. Best name, frontwards and backwards. It's yeah. the same motherfucking thing. What's fucked up is that if you use it too much, you get uncomfortable, like UTI, Desensitized. feeling. Mm, you never well, get that? I don't get that. Like, I try to limit my like my masturbating times because yeah. I can become a, a bit of a like habitual masturbator. Yeah. So, like, because I, like... I feel like if to me when I use it too much, I desensitize myself to like normal orgasms during sex. So mm -hmm. that's why I do it. But I mean, I haven't had any issues. When in the beginning, when I didn't really like whatever, like if I would, I would just sit there and like orgasm 40 times and then not go pee or something, then yeah, I would probably have yeah. a UTI. But I've learned to know like, hey, bitch, you, if you don't get out of bed right now after the 10th one, you're not going anywhere for probably two hours. Facts. They're going to come looking for you and you I have to shit to do. Limit yourself. I have the shit to do. <laughs> But yeah, no, that's definitely, you know, but Hitachi's definitely made me in my celibate times and not because I'm choice, like that I want to be celibate, but I like, there's no one that. Yeah, we've been not, there. Not, <laughs> yeah, it down. We all experience that porn star or not. Had a sexual encounter in a crowded place. Uh, yes. What crowded place? Um, I don't 
the thing? I don't know. Like you need this store. one again? Yeah. A store? What were you? Stoner ass. <laughs> I'm all, you were you at a store, a festival, a concert thing, behind the stage? Like, were you shopping at Target? I mean, I don't know. Throwing it out there. It's a thing. I definitely done it in a dressing room, shopping, or like a bathroom at a bar or a club. Yeah, I've done that. Mm-hmm. Golden showers. How do you feel about them? No, thank you. No pee for you? Not for me. No, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> all right. Last Diamonds. one is diamond, which is a spicy question. They're all a little spicy. Have you dated someone older than you? And if so, how much older? Uh, Yeah. I'd say at the time it was only like four years or so, but nothing much older. I've definitely had sex with older men. What's the oldest older man you've ever had sex oh, with? God, I want to say like <laughs> six. I want the truth. Don't lie to us, Kendra. I the most I've asked I've asked someone and they told me it was like sixty five or something. It was like was, older than my dad. For was sure. there a, an age that you didn't just want to ask the number when you said the oldest I asked? <laughs> were you for this? Yeah, because some people, you know, just I, I mean, for the most part, everyone kind of looked young. There, but there was this one person where I was like, how old are you? But you didn't ask. It was old. <laughs> <laughs> it was old. I was like, ah, I can't keep doing this with my life. <laughs> you, had this. A, you had a moment of clarity. You were like, why? Clarity. Why? Have you ever used food during intimacy? Uh, Yeah, I fucked myself with a cucumber before zucchini. How did that work out? um it was all right did it get you off or was it just because of like the fact of doing it for like a like on camera i think because i picked an a big enough one it did you get pick, me off you picked the right one to satisfy you <laughs> yep <laughs> definitely <laughs> you're funny i like that cut or uncut um i like uncut i guess called someone the wrong name during sex <laughs> no but i'll think it in my head <laughs> <laughs> Lots of times. That's why you stick with like babies, honey. Yeah, daddy. Daddy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hooked up with someone and kept it a secret from your friends. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you keep Couple it a secret? Times. Uh, because not, it was your ex's business. best friend or because oh no like a- i told my friends about that bitch <laughs> <laughs> i was like you i wanted them to what? know what <laughs> i did but uh, yeah, I, I've kept lots of people's secrets. I don't know if they did the same thing. Hopefully. Craziest place you've had sex? Um, hmm. I don't know. It could be for porn. It could be for in your regular life. Do you, like, have any spontaneous places? Yeah, I guess just, like, in the club or a strip club. Okay. Yeah, I was in... The like Bahamas, <laughs> and it was my birthday, and my friend, my friend was determined to get me dick. So was she it a was male like, "Strip club? Um, no, it was a female strip club." Yeah. And she was like, "Any guy in here that you see that you want, just tell me, and I'm gonna make it happen." So I did find, I did see a really attractive, uh, a guy, and I told her, and like he knew the club owners and stuff. So we just went into. So are you naturally like room. that horny that you're like, I need to fuck somebody right now? Or is this because she was your birthday and she's like, I, you haven't had dick in a long drunk. time and you are whatever. Drunk. It was my birthday. He was hot. It was fun. Spontaneous. Experience. Yeah. Experience. Last time you had sex with an ex. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, Do I need to use I want the truth. I feel like this is, this is your button today. <laughs> Sex with an ex. You contemplate, you know, the weed smoke is like, hmm, which one should I do or not? I would say a couple months ago. With, it was the one that rolled me the blunt and went down on me. Was it good? Was it a, a good situation where you're like, why did I go back to this? I think at the point, the last time that we had sex, I think at that point it was, I was kind of over it. I feel like as females, we tend to, like, we need to revisit one more time to see, but, like, we already yeah, know. Most we're of like, the time mm. we're over Like, I'm just it. horny, but. Mm. Yeah. Who would be your celebrity hall pass? Like who I want to fuck or yeah, who? who you would want to fuck. In mm. any situation, if you were single, with, in a relationship, it would just be all time. If this person was like, I'm fucking you, it wouldn't matter what situation you're fucking them. Michael B. Jordan. Mm. Nice, sexy. Yeah, or a sexy. young James Franco. Mm. I like that. Mm-hmm. What is the most embarrassing moment you've had from a dating past? Um, 
dating. I don't know. What's the longest time you've ever been without sex? Mm, like four months. Were you like, did you feel like you're going crazy? Do you feel like you whatever? I feel like I thrive better off sex. So when I don't have it, it's really challenging for myself. Or did you feel like uh, better, like mind control? I felt like I didn't really notice. But when I did notice, I was like, holy fuck, it's been like six weeks since I've had sex. You were just busy doing stuff and you're just like. Yeah, it's just during the pandemic. I was just like, I don't know, just isolating myself. Have you ever been too drunk to stay awake during sex? Yeah, I, I feel like a lot of times I wouldn't pass out during it, but I'll like think that I'm going to have sex and then I'm just like, nah, I'm too tired. Drunk. What is the craziest thing that's ever happened to you on the set? Um, craziest thing. Maybe I, for you or the guy and you're just like, oh, I don't know, but I still have to do the scene with him or it could be a girl or. Um, I mean, for a guy, it would definitely be, I hate like when they sweat a lot or the craziest thing to me is when they like sweat and it kind of drips on you in your face. So to me, that's like not chill. But for the girl, it would be I was using a strap on and I didn't really know what I was doing. I don't have any feeling. And it was someone much smaller than me. So I kind of just like you beat up the pussy. Yeah. <laughs> strap ons are hard. They're well, you, very do, you hard. really don't have any feeling. So you don't yeah. know. And if they're not saying anything, that's the good thing about being in communication. If you don't tell me, I don't know. if you're hurting Yeah, it. I was so nervous. And then I feel like I did. Um, hurt her and so I cried I was like upset <laughs> yeah they gave me like a rice crispy treat and a juice box and I was all better <laughs> <You're so laughs> dead <true>. ass <laughs> is there a scene like a dream scene that you haven't done already or some like maybe a performer that you haven't got to work with it could be current in the past that you would want to have happen for you um, I've always I've always wanted to do the school girl actually because I feel like I've done it for my own but I've never really done it where it's like a full production with a classroom and a teacher. And I've been saying that I want to do one where like I'm in detention with another student who's like hot and probably big and black and ripped and stuff like that. And then um, I like fuck them when the teacher leaves and then the teacher comes back and just joins us. So I've always wanted nice. to do that. I'm going to make it happen. But is there any particular performers that you haven't worked with that you'd want to work with? Mm, I don't know. I've worked with a lot of people. I Ironically enough, I was thinking maybe Jordy because I was like, he looks like he could be in high school with me. And he's so popular, like especially on browsers and stuff and Pornhub. So I was like, that would be cool. But I think because of COVID and stuff, it's not happening. Dream anytime scene. Soon. Well, it'll happen. I, you know, if you want it to be done, you you make your own movies. You can yes. Do it. You can do it. All right, is there any questions you have for me before we wrap things up here? Um, I don't know. I guess since you've been in the industry so long, like if you could go back and give yourself advice or give younger people getting in an advice, like what would you say? What would I say? Um, I always say to people that I, you know, in the past, it's like it's just – Never forget where you started. I feel like people, you know, sometimes, you know, people get in situations that they forget where they started from and how hard, you know, success can be for certain people. And it doesn't take, you know, it's not overnight. It's not whatever, but it's, you know, hard work kind of pays off. And I feel like people nowadays kind of think that it needs to happen a lot sooner than it really does because people just want things to happen more quickly. We're like, well, now, 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 because of all the technology and things. So it's like really just putting the work in and just staying dedicated to your craft. And if that's what you want to do and aspire to do, then at the end goal, then you're going to be successful in it. If you are kind of halfway in it, then you're going to be halfway successful. It's just all as much as you put into it. Mm -hmm. And always just stay true to yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one thing with me is like, I've, you know, I've have, I'm really grateful for the career that I have had and the way that my journey kind of started and kind of ended or you know kind of where it's at now is I you know I feel like I have a pretty good head on my shoulders where I've never been kind of in the worst situation sometimes not always the best and challenging 
but I feel like it only made me a bigger and better person from thriving from those things and moving forward. But I always stayed true to what I wanted to do. You know, my mindset, if I didn't like something, I was very vocal about it. And, you know, a bigger reason why I wanted to have the podcast was because I also wanted to have that known to not just the industry, but, you know, to everybody and my fans as well is because people, you know, your voice sometimes gets kind of muted because, you know, we are in a, a male driven business, but a woman ran kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, we kind of get muted on certain things and things aren't talked about. And people, again, like they, you know, desensitize how human we really are and what the business really is and how successful we can be. So I feel like um, it's really great to just kind of be true to yourself and stay with like what kind of what you want to do. So that's Facts. what I would have to say. But yeah, I'm very proud of you. I feel like you, Aww. you know, I've known you since, you know, in the beginning, you know, I didn't know, I know you as well, but I remember being, you know, at Exotic, I think it was Dallas is when I first yeah. was introduced to you. Um, yeah. But, you know, you, you know, I've seen you kind of grow up. Like I said, I haven't really had a real conversation where it wasn't either with alcohol involved or a party setting or, you know, other people involved, you know, whatever. So I was happy that you got, you know, time to come here and talk to me and everybody and kind of get to know your story on my, you know, perspective. Um, so I think, you know, I think it's really cool, but you, you know, I love that, you know, your journey, you've been very successful with being in your contracts with, you know, Vixen and Brazzers now. So, you know, that's really, you know, a big accomplishment for someone like yourself in the industry at this current time in the, in the world. But yeah, so kudos to you. Thank you. I was going to say thank you for having me on. And, you know, every time I've seen you at the conventions, you've always been so nice to me. And I was always like starstruck and I was like, I can't believe she's being so nice. Girl, to me. Just so a girl like, with the big booty. I know. I'm like, I, but then every time that I saw you, you were like that. So I was like, that's just how she is. Yeah. So, I feel like, you know, you could take the girl yeah. out of Texas, but you can't take the Texas out of the girl. <laughs> so I don't know. For me, I just, for people who are nice and are, you know, genuine to me, then I'm definitely, you know, give that out as well. So, mm. but yeah. So thank you again. Uh, please let us know your social media so we can support you and go follow you. As yes. Well. I'm always getting deleted so you know it's important my new instagram is kendra sunderland x3 and my twitter is ks library girl all right there you go private talk i hope that you enjoy this episode make sure that you like and subscribe subscribe and comment down below and uh, until next time